Welcome grade 12s to this session on aldehydes and ketones. These are organic molecules that are not hydrocarbons. We have discussed quite a number of organic molecules that contain oxygen, and I hope you can see why there is such amazing variety of organic compounds. By now, you can identify the functional group and the structure of alcohols, acids, and esters. Today, we move on to two more organic groups that contain oxygen. Amira will explain how to name the aldehydes and ketones and their molecular and structural formulae. We saw that the way to identify a carboxylic acid is to look for the oxygen and carbon atoms that are double bonded to one another and an OH group. We call this the carboxyl group. Now we will be learning about molecules that have a double bond with oxygen but no OH group. This double bond to a single oxygen is called a carbonyl. Compounds which contain the carbonyl group are aldehydes and ketones. The position of the carbonyl in the molecule decides whether it is an aldehyde or a ketone. Let's look at this more closely. When the carbonyl is at the end of a chain, this type of compound is known as an aldehyde. All aldehydes have the carbonyl group at the end of the chain, like this one, which is called propanyl. Can you see where the name comes from? We name aldehydes in the same way we name most organic molecules. The three carbon chain means that the backbone is propane. The letter E at the end of the word is swapped for AL to show that it is an aldehyde. Easy, isn't it? Now try to draw one of your own. Draw a molecule of butanol. Well, I'm sure you drew a molecule that looks like this. The prefix but indicates that the aldehyde must contain four carbon atoms. Remember to place the double bonded oxygen atom, the carbonyl group, at the end of the molecule's structure, on the first or last carbon. So that's how to draw and name an aldehyde molecule. First, name the backbone, and then end the name with L. Now what about a ketone? Well, ketones also have a carbonyl group, but the group is inside the molecular structure. Here are a few ketones, and you can see that they all look very similar. Can you see how they differ from aldehydes? Yes, ketones always have the carbonyl inside the chain, unlike aldehydes that have the carbonyl on the last or first carbon atom in the backbone. By now, I'm sure that you've picked up that the molecules in a homologous series are named by finding the name of the backbone molecule first. Thereafter, the name changes according to the functional group that we find. Ketones are no different. Let's take a look at the simplest ketone and see if we can name it. This compound has a carbon atom chain with three atoms in it. The backbone is therefore propane. Because there is a carbonyl functional group inside the chain, this is a ketone. When there is an oxygen-containing functional group in a molecule, we change the end of the word to name it. Ketones are no different. The end of the word changes from E to O-N-E, so propane becomes propanone. Now, I'd like you to name one on your own. Think about all the naming rules you know and try to apply them. Can you name this molecule? It is definitely a ketone, and it has five carbon atoms in it, so it is a pentanone. The tricky part is to name this molecule based on the exact position of the carbonyl functional group, just like we did when naming haloalkanes and the double bond in alkenes. 
Remember, the first step is to number the carbon atoms in the backbone, starting at the end that is closest to the carbonyl group. So in this molecule, the carbonyl group is on carbon number two. Did you name it correctly? It should be pentan 21 Now that we have discussed the naming and the origins of aldehydes and ketones, let us find out from Philip how some of these compounds are used. Manufactured aldehydes and ketones are used in many interesting ways. To preserve species in museums and labs, to manufacture many plastics and glues, to process leather and make the silver parts of mirrors, to make nail polish remover, varnishes and paint strippers, and to make many other chemicals, like acetic acids and acetates. Some aldehydes and many ketones have pleasant smells and can be used to flavor foodstuffs and as ingredients in perfume. Some of the flavors available are almond, spearmint, caraway seed, licorice, lemon, cinnamon, pineapple, strawberry, ginger, and even butter flavor. Some even smell of wood, leather, or lavender. And I thought that my flavored water contained real fruit. Now that I know more, I will always read the labels on my food. That is all we have for you today, grade 12s. We are sure you enjoyed this session. Do not forget to visit www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn where you will find more information about organic molecules. You can also find some challenging questions in the task video. Please do join us again. Goodbye.